Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a relatively new study that essentially tries to answer the question in regards to extraterrestrial intelligence. Do any of the previous SETI studies contain any data that might have been missed previously that may suggest the existence of more advanced type 2 or type 3 galactic civilizations that might have been sending signals across the universe but might have been missed by previous researchers. In other words, instead of looking for the planetary civilizations or the type 1 according to Kardashev scale, the main emphasis here was on type 2 stellar civilizations capable of harnessing a lot of energy from the entire star system or even type 3 civilizations able to harness energy from the entire galaxy. With all these principles based on the famous Kardashev scale. The scale proposed by the Soviet astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev that divided civilizations into three different types. In this case based entirely on the amount of total energy required by this civilization and how this energy was harnessed. With humanity in this case still not even reaching the type 1 civilization requirements because we're not able to use the entire energy of the planet. But the scientists behind this study wanted to focus on type 2 and type 3 civilizations whose requirements would most likely increase by a factor of 10. And as of today there's only been a few speculative cases of the potential detection of these unusual civilizations. The most famous one is the Tabis star, the unusual main sequence F-type star whose unusual dimming a few years ago led to a few speculations that maybe this was actually some kind of a Dyson sphere. With the enormous structure in this case producing these unusual dimming effects. But as the scientists investigated this more, they realized that the Dyson sphere should also be producing a lot of infrared effects that were not visible in this case at all. And so as you might have learned from some of the previous videos in the description, this was more or less explained by a presence of cometary objects or something else very similar producing a lot of dust. And so apart from these speculatory studies, there really hasn't been any proof of anything out there at least in terms of type 1 civilizations whose techno signatures would be visible across the galaxy. But as of today, all of these surveys conducted by SETI, search for extraterrestrial intelligence, have mostly been looking for type 1 civilizations in our own galaxy. They have not really been considering anything beyond our galaxy and for the most part ignored the so-called type 2 and type 3 civilizations. And so the scientists behind the recent paper that you can find in the description wanted to establish a kind of a limit on what the scientists discovered so far using various surveys and whether any type 2 and type 3 civilization signs were discovered in them as well. But they did so without conducting any additional observations by using all of the data that already exists and has been collected over the past 60 years. All of this data is of course radio data from various radio observatories, with the main focus being detection of very powerful radio signals that could be potentially sent by some distant civilization in order to maybe communicate with someone else or communicate among themselves. And we'll actually discuss some of these previous potential discoveries in some of the videos you can find in the description, but just to give you a kind of a summary, so far nothing has been confirmed yet. There doesn't seem to be anyone out there. But once again, this was only concerning type 1 civilizations. However, all of this data collected over the years has also included the line of sight that we've been kind of ignoring until now. And just to help you visualize what I'm talking about, let's take a look at just a random spot somewhere right here in the Milky Way galaxy. So, so far the scientists have been basically mostly listening for signs of radio emissions coming from some kind of a distant object, like for example this star right here. But the thing is, while they're listening for this star, right behind that star, they are also technically listening to all of these very distant galaxies that are still there, that are still visible, but so far have been kind of ignored by most of these studies. This study, however, expanded on all of these potentially invisible galaxies, where there might also be very powerful galactic civilizations, maybe even controlling the whole galaxy, sending very powerful radio emissions across the entire universe. Maybe. Possibly. So that's kind of what this paper wanted to find out. During those observations of individual stars and individual objects, was there ever a communication from something much more distant and something much more powerful, such as, in this case, type 2 or type 3 civilization? Or just to rephrase this once again, even though the scientists were kind of looking at the star right here, in our own galaxy, there might have been something else coming from the galaxy behind the star from an actual very powerful civilization that already exists somewhere out there. And in this case we're not just talking about one or two galaxies, if you were to actually see all of the galaxies behind the star, you would probably find hundreds and even thousands of different galaxies in pretty much the same location as the star itself. And so we're basically looking for very very advanced very powerful civilizations 
in extremely distant galaxies. And it's really interesting that completely by chance, right here we have two distant galaxies that seem to be in the same location, but are actually very far away from one another. This galaxy here is only about 4 billion light years away from us, whereas the one right here is about 11 billion light years away from us. And both, in theory, could contain powerful civilizations trying to communicate. Or at least producing some unusual signs detectable in radio waves that could potentially be seen as artificial produced by intelligence. And this is a slightly more efficient way of looking for extraterrestrial intelligence. It's a little bit better than looking at individual stars one by one. But the assumption here is that they have to be really advanced, type 2 or type 3, capable of generating a lot more energy and sending radio frequency signals across pretty much the entire universe. Capable of transmitting billions of bits per second within 100,000 light year radius that in theory should be detectable by us as well. But as you might have already guessed, so far, nothing at all has been discovered. Having examined various data from the project Breakthrough Listen that began back in 2016, not a single one of these objects or anything behind them contained any potentially artificial data. And so even though in most of these cases it was really the focus on just one star, even the objects behind those stars contain absolutely nothing. And according to the scientists behind the study, all of these observations very likely were able to see approximately 100 trillion different stars. At least several thousand or possibly even several million times more than we initially assumed. And not a single one of those stars contained any advanced civilizations, at least according to the data. And the main finding here is that, well, the number of advanced civilizations in the local universe is very likely much much lower than anyone ever thought, if there are any at all. With a current estimate for a potentially advanced civilization within approximately 3 billion light years away from us being something like 1 in 100 trillion out of any potential extragalactic civilization that might exist out there. Or in other words, if there are any extragalactic civilizations out there, only 1 in a trillion might contain something powerful enough to transmit across the entire universe. Potentially one of them might be type 2 or type 3, but none of them have been detected and even here the chances for them to exist are just extremely low. But there's still an important side note. All of this is based on somewhat limited observations by the Project Breakthrough Listen. The project that only covered approximately 0.05% of the entire night skies and mostly looked at various objects with very limited duration, sometimes only 5 minutes long. And so maybe at those particular moments, nobody was just transmitting anything. Nevertheless, considering the amount of those background galaxies, this definitely puts a huge limitation on the existence of so-called Type 2 and Type 3 civilizations. The civilizations that actually many scientists don't think might even exist at all. We've discussed some of this in some of the previous videos regarding Fermi Paradox that you can find in the description. And so because the actual observations so far have been kind of limited, there's maybe still a chance. As a matter of fact, if we were to kind of compare this to planet Earth, at least in terms of the numbers and the percentages, it's somewhat similar to how much of the seafloor we've mapped so far. About 10 years ago, it was only about 0.05% as well. And it's only in the last few years that various underwater expeditions, such as EV Nautilus, whose video you can find in the description, started to discover signs of actual intelligence very close to the bottom of the ocean. Here's the discovery of a very unusual octopus several kilometers deep in the water. And as many studies have shown before, various octopuses are definitely intelligent. But their existence on the deep ocean floor has only been confirmed in the last decade or so. And so in this case, it's just a matter of more observations and more searches, which is pretty much exactly what the scientists are hoping to achieve with projects like Breakthrough Listen as well. We just need to keep looking, keep searching, and keep trying to improve our techniques as well. Nevertheless, as of 2023, there is no confirmation or even sign of any extraterrestrial intelligence anywhere out there. At least for now, we seem to be kind of alone. But we'll discuss more of these concepts in some of the future videos, and make sure to check out some of the previous videos on this topic as well. These videos should be in the description below. On that note, once we learn something else, I'll make sure to come back and talk about it in the video that should be coming up sometime in the next few months. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.